get the tea on now? said Ahmed. Okay, responded Neville, skulking off to the tiny kitchen to boil the kettle. And make it strong. I can't stand weak tea, he called after him. Cars were still pulling up after the morning rush. There had been three punctures and the rest were the usual worn tires that needed replacing. Neville put tea bags in their mugs inside wishing he wasn't the trainee under Ahmed's boot. The wheel balancing machine was where he was to be stationed for the afternoon. Look, you just need to bang in the wheel weights like this. Don't be afraid to hit the hammer hard, said Ahmed, seeming a little impatient. If you can balance a wheel like you make a good strong cup of tea, we'll make a super wheeler out of you yet. In four weeks of working at Tire Express, this was the first compliment I may have given to Nabil, who smiled. It was a dark and cold January evening when Nabil set off on foot just after five for home, a 20 minute walk. Approaching a zebra crossing, he noticed from the side of his vision what appeared to be something falling. He stopped to look. There was a man on the ground. Nobody else was around except him and the hum of cars going by. He had fallen next to a post box that was set back from the road in front of a parade of shops. Are you all right? He asked. The man had his back to him and was panting heavily. Abel came around and saw his old face screwed up and in pain. He was Middle Eastern too, probably in his sixties and slightly overweight. Kneeling down, he put his hand behind his head and inclined his ear to the man's mouth. He had now stopped breathing. Neville knew from his training this was a sign of a heart attack. Stretching him out on the ground, he saw a woman exiting the corner shop. Ambulance! Call 999! Now please! What is it? The woman rushed over with a look of grave concern. Heart attack. He stopped breathing. Tell him to come quickly. I'm going to give him chest compressions until the paramedics come with a defibrillator. The woman lost no time on the phone. She calmly gave the address of the shop. No, I don't know the name. He's a complete stranger. Now we'll give him no more than half a dozen chest compressions. And he regained breathing and slightly opened his eyes. But he was very weak. Within a few short minutes, the ambulance had arrived. He's coming around, but his heart rate is slow and his breathing is very laboured, he said to the paramedic who was putting him on a stretcher with his colleague. You coming then, Doc? He asked as they loaded the man into the back of the ambulance. Yes, I'll come, but I'm not a doctor. Figure of speech, but you did a good job keeping him alive, mate. A young doctor wearing trainers entered the waiting room. Mr. Khan owes his life to you. Where did you learn first aid like that? It's a long story. He hesitated before continuing. I'm glad he's alive for sure. Did you have to operate? We we're observing him first before we decide if we need to perform a bypass or not. He's still poorly. But he asked for you. The doctor led him into a room where Mr. Cam was hooked up to a heart monitor and drip. Here's our hero to see you. The whiteboard above the bed had Victor Khan scrolled on it. He looked up at Nabil, and a half smile came to his face. He whispered a dry, thank you, and was exhausted from the effort. I'm glad you're in good hands here, Mr. Khan. He summoned up his strength. Come back tomorrow. I would be delighted to do so, sir, after work, bowing to him. Next evening, Nabil went back to visit Victor Khan he was looking stronger. They were planning on a bypass operation the following day. The doctor was still curious about how a tire mechanic knew what to do. Nabil sat down. I was halfway through my medical training in Syria. Fighting took over my town and my family were killed. I fled and came to England as an asylum seeker. My family were well to do and I was on track to be a medic. My fluency in English helped my asylum request to get sorted quicker. 
looked at the ground. Not much work in medicine for a half qualified doctor with no financial assets. So my patients are now car wheels. He bent down and tied one of his shoelaces. You must give me your address so I can send you something to say thank you. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Mr. Cam was getting tired now. The nurse approached Nabil and knew it was time for visitors to leave. He scribbled his address on a piece of paper that was next to the bed. Two weeks later, Nabil was on the phone in his flat. Yes, I can come in at Monday at 11 a.m. Thank you. He hung up, then looked up another number in his address book and called it. They're interviewing me on Monday. I can't believe it. This is absolutely wonderful. I should be able to start from where I left off. I knew they'd like you. I'm quite confident you will make a wonderful doctor, Nabil. Tears were streaming down his eyes. I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without your support. I don't know how I'll ever repay you these fees, Mr. Khan. This is not a loan. This is an investment in your future. What good will that money do me when I pass on? The country needs more doctors, young man.